All right, hi guys. So let's start the next episode of five MCQs in five minutes, through which you are actually revising five very high yield topics for your examination. This series is actually uh, beneficial not only for FMG but also for NEET PG and NICT aspirants as well. Let's get uh, with the very first question that we have. A patient has history of night sweats and cough for two months. Okay, night sweat and cough directly think about TB, you know, without looking at any other alternative, but look at the other thing. Pleural effusion may there is raised level of adenosine deaminase that is again further confirming the diagnosis of the tuberculosis. What will be the antibiotic that will be given in the initial two months of the therapy? Initial two months. That means in the tuberculosis, whenever you want to treat a case of tuberculosis, do you know that we are having initial for the drug sensitive tuberculosis? We are having six month therapy, and in the six month we are having intensive phase and we are having a continuation phase. Intensive phase is given for the two months. Continuation phase is given for the four month. In the intensive phase, we are having HRZE. HRZE is isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. Continuation phase may we are having HRE. HRE that is uh, isoniazid, rifampicin, and ethambutol. Right? That is going to be your, I mean, uh, uh, drug sensitive tuberculosis. And for the initial two month, we are going to utilize ethambutol. Linezolid again for the drug resistant tuberculosis, we are going to utilize streptomycin again is uh, a reserve drug that can be utilized in drug resistant TB. Same goes for levofloxacin, that is one of the uh, group B drug for the drug resistant tuberculosis. Right? For the initial two months, we are going to utilize ethambutol as per the given question. In a patient who develops pulmonary fibrosis, which of the following agent is used to decrease the progression of fibrosis? Always remember the key moment that I used to discuss with all of you guys. I hope you have seen it in my uh, previous sessions as well. Here, for the decreasing or slowing down the progression of pulmonary fibrosis, we are going to utilize perfenidone. Perfenidone is the one that is going to decrease the or slow down the uh, uh, fibrosis. In the recent INICT examination, they asked that cardiotoxicity that is actually caused by cardiotoxicity that is caused by your uh, doxorubicin, donorubicin. To prevent this one, what are we going to utilize? So we will be utilizing dexrazoxin, dexrazoxin. Then you should know that if there is a hemorrhagic cystitis that is caused by cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide, we are going to utilize for the prophylaxis IV mesna. There are many other things that I have already discussed in Kivoman. I want all of you guys to go ahead and you can also check that Kivoman in my uh, Insta uh, uh, post that I have already posted for all of you guys. Busulfan is one of the anti-cancer drugs that will be associated. They themselves cause it. They themselves cause pulmonary fibrosis. They themselves cause pulmonary fibrosis. Rofrumilase is one of the phosphodiesterase four inhibitor that can be utilized mainly in your COPD patient. Epremilase, Rofrumilase, they are COPD. Ipratropium again, it's one of the M3 antagonists that is coming under the SAMA short acting muscarinic antagonist. Also can be utilized in COPD patient, right? Correct answer for this question is perfectly Third question that we have. Which of the following correctly describe the mechanism of action of labetalol? What is labetalol, guys? Labetalol is actually a third generation beta blocker, and this third generation beta blocker, in addition to the beta blocking, they are also having alpha 1 blocking property. They are also considered as a drug of choice for hypertension in pregnancy. They are also considered the drug of choice for hypertensive emergency in pregnancy. In both the scenario, we can utilize hypertension pregnancy, hypertensive emergency. In any other case of hypertensive emergency, also we can utilize. They can also be utilized in other cases of hypertensive emergency in EU and me in any other case, right? Among the given choices, beta plus alpha 1 receptor blocker is the correct uh, statement. Other options are simply wrong. The third one, the fourth one that we are having, which of the following diuretic act by act as the site mark? What is the site that they have marked? If you look at the image, we are having multiple sites here. What are the sites that we are going to see here? We are having one site. This is known as your proximal convoluted tribute. And the diuretic that is going to act here is known as carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Acetazolamide, dorsolamide, right? Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Then we are having thick ascending limb of lupafenle here. Our loop diuretics will be working. Drugs like your furosemide, torsemide by inhibiting your NAK2CL sodium potassium 2 chloride inhibitor here our thiazide diuretics is going to work thiazides are going to work that is going to be your hydrochlorothiazide hydrochlorothiazide chlorothalidone hydrochlorothiazide chlorothalidone many short me i hope all of you guys are already aware this will be acting by inhibiting your nacl co-transporter inhibitor and here at the last point that is at the collecting duct our potassium sparing diuretic will be working Potassium sparing diuretic. In FMG solution also I have given you a table. I am sure all of you guys have seen that table in where I have given you the site 
the diuretic and the example of the name of those diuretic that is going to work i have summarized the same thing here as well among the given choices uh, they are asking at the uh, collecting uh, sorry dct they are asking at the dct and the only one is hydrochlorothiazide that is one of the thiazide diuretics furosemide is one of the loop diuretic acting at the thick ascending limb of lupofen acetazolamide is one of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor acting at the pct spironolactone it's one of the potassium spirin diuretic acting at the collecting duct okay Next one that we are having a patient cancer chemotherapy developed neutropenia. Chemotherapy induced neutropenia. Again, all time favorite question. Or chemotherapy induced uh, diarrhea that I have told you in previous session. Chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting that is going to be 5 to 3 antagonist like condensatron. Lopramide is for the diarrhea. Which of the following is a WBC growth factor that can be used in this patient? So, granulocyte stimulant will be filigrastin. Darbopoietin, it is a erythropoietin analog that can be utilized for chemotherapy induced anemia. Anemia due to chemotherapy or due to end stage renal disease esrd is end stage renal disease oprelvecin it's one of the interleukin 11 agonists that can be utilized for chemo induced thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia chemo induced thrombocytopenia or it can also be utilized for itp idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura romiplostim it's one of the platelet instrument they are the thrombopoietin receptor agonist they can also be utilized for the same purpose but oprelvecin is the 11 interleukin agonist darbopoietin they are the erythropoietin agonist right so with this one we have covered our five mcqs in five minutes time probably open each other i hope you guys can adjust with this but our main purpose actually is to discuss all these high yield topics in this uh, particular time that we have right so thank you very much for all your love and support in this one please don't forget to like subscribe and share with your friends. I'll see you in the next class. Thank you very much.